all these pieces have to come together for that moment. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what that moment is until after the fact. Mm -hmm. And so I now look at like the kingdom of God in that same light. Mm -hmm. It's like we all have a significant piece, whether you're in the forefront and the spotlight's on you or whether you're in the background and nobody even knows. Welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here today. And we are here with Brad and Marty Galbraith. How are you guys? Great. We're good. Great. Dan and I are super excited to spend super. some time with you. <laughs> and what you don't know is that Brad has been on our podcast team since the beginning. And nobody has heard his voice because he's in the background. It's too bad, too. Um, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And he's See? done all of the editing for just nearly every single episode. He is the heaviest lifter on the team for sure. Like, I don't think we can say enough <clears throat> for those of you who like have listened or been fans, and everything else. If Brad wasn't here, <laughs> this doesn't <laughs> exist. Like there's no way to say so that politely. True. Like the editing, there is so much recording that's on the ground from us making horrific mistakes. Like, right. We're like, sorry, sorry, Brad. Like, Again, we're sorry. It's the most common phrase in the podcast. If you're like in the behind the scenes, little inside trader here, like we always say, sorry, Brad, so often because we make mistakes. We flub our words. Right. And now he's here. So yep. you, Yay. we don't have to apologize. We can apologize right to his face um, <laughs> about all the editing he has to do when yep. he's not here. So yeah, it's, it's unbelievable how much you put into this, this whole production. From yeah, it's been fun. It's been a great experience. So. Yeah, um, I, I, I really can't understate enough like how imp- impactful it has been on this vision that, that, that I had. And, of course, Marty came along and made all of this look beautiful also. Um, but without, without the gifts that you've had and the ability to learn and, and, and grow and figure things out as we go, I mean, it's been kind of – I mean, we think we've talked a lot about the very first episode <laughs> when I laid my, flap, my laptop out and we're like, yeah. all right, we're it doing was, a podcast. It was crazy. Here we go. That was so funny. It was It was fun. great. But you've well, been with us the whole way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I remember, I think it was Marty that she was like, hey, I heard a rumor that Tanya's starting a podcast. Because she, <laughs> she, she knew that I just li- I like podcasts. I would listen to them a lot, especially driving or working. I would always be listening to them. And I was just like, if we're doing that, I want to be a part of it. And I think I just came to you. I was like, yeah. And I was like, hey, if, if there's something I can do, I'm willing to do it. I don't know what to do or how to do it, but I'm willing to Same. give it a, give it a yeah. whirl. And <laughs> we're like, Hey, you're going to do the most important <laughs> thing, possibly the most important thing in the podcast. So, <laughs> like, make it exist. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Just kind of fell into it and just <clears throat> figured it out along the way. Best I could. What have been, what's been like a lesson or the biggest thing you've learned along this way? I mean, I think, you know, I just had to get a lot more, a lot of these things, you know, dealing with audio and stuff. Like I play guitar, I've been in music. Um, so these are all things I've, I've guess I've been familiar with, but never really like got into real deep and heavy, never did it professionally, never really. Um, so getting, you know, trial by fire of like really trying to edit something that's actually being released, you know, like I've recorded music and stuff in the past, but it was like, I would do it, listen to it. Oh, that was fun. And then that was it. Like it never actually went anywhere. So mm-hmm. So now it's actually going out and, you know, getting thousands and thousands of listens. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so it, so I think that's been one of the coolest parts is just being <laughs> a part of that, knowing it's, knowing I'm a piece of that. Yeah. And if I can add, he is such a researcher. So if you give him a task and if he doesn't fully understand, he's going to sit there and yeah. research and re- research and videos after videos, you know, like that's just how he's always been and how I've always known him to be is yeah. such a researcher. And I would like geek with him with it, you know, just like messing with him. Yeah. But honestly, like that's what has made him so successful in life is because he does the background um, understanding of everything. Yeah. So. So it's been fun. Like I said, I played guitar and, you know, so I knew some stuff about audio, but not to the extent that I needed to know for this project. So I've learned a lot along the way. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like cameras. I've, you know, I, I've had, you know, a couple of Canon cameras that done photography, you know, not the professional again, but just, you know, it's, I, I always thought it was fun. Right. Um, I like creating. I like that kind of stuff, but it's normally more on the digital side. Like I'm not a drawer, not a painter, none of that. Um, so, you know, I've played with Photoshop and like I said, I had cannons and, you know, had a little photography, you know, page going at one point when I was a teen. Um, but you know, like it, it was just kind of like, oh, it's kind of fun to do. Um, but like, I'm the kind of person that 
I like to have like a purpose behind something. So it's like, I can only do something for fun for so long. And then, you know, you kind of get burned out. Cause it's like, what's the real point? So being a part of something like this is like, there's a lot bigger purpose. That's a lot bigger than me. Um, so it's been fun to get in and be a part of that and, and take those things that were just kind of hobbies and interests and actually turn them into something that's has kingdom purpose behind it. That's great. Well, I think just for knowing you, like there is a desire for excellence Yeah, and you, it's really hard just to play with something yeah. and not operate at excellence. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, Oh, some people can just dabble here and there, yeah. but when you know that your desire is for a next level production or a next level output, whatever yeah. that is, it's really difficult just kind of like, eh, yeah, not take exactly. it seriously. <laughs> and, 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 I, and, I, and I tend to p- pick hobbies that to get to that level, it's like thousands and thousands of dollars. So I think a lot of times in my personal life, that's where I hit that lid. It's like, okay, <laughs> like, okay. I spent enough money here, you know, uh, <laughs> that, that's probably you good. Know what? I'm you good know what? I'm good now. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> good. So <laughs> lesson learned. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> well, uh, a lot of your life story, uh, has to do with how you've been able to impact the kingdom of God. So uh, tell us a little bit about what you do for a living, but also how how is that bridged into church ministry? So I'm um, electrical engineer. Um, so Super smart. Professional nerd. Um, to most people. <laughs> master nerd. Uh, master nerd. <laughs> I, get paid, well. I get paid to be a nerd, all right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. doing it next level. So, yeah, I think, you know, growing up, I just always had like a – you know, most people will probably say like a natural gift. You know, I, I truly believe it's a gift from God of just kind of figuring things out, working with, you know, mechanical and, you know, electrical type mm-hmm. stuff. Like, I don't know, for some reason, it, it kind of makes sense in my mind in a way that I can't explain. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always been fun. So, you know, growing up as a kid, I would, you know, I'd have to like take my bike apart to put it back together just to, just to see why, you know, I'd, I'd build stuff with Legos, you know, it's like always wanting to build stuff. And so, um, then as I got a little bit older, I went into the Air Force and, you know, I did avionics technician for like the F-15. So I was working with like the radar systems and communications and it was just more nerd stuff, but it's <laughs> completely fine. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and I think it was in there that I really, like, I think that's when like the light bulb went off and I was like, I kind of have like a gift for this because, you know, I got in there, you know, and you would have, you know, like your peers and I'd like not to say it like braggingly, like, but things would just click. Mm-hmm. It seemed like easier than for others, you know? And, and so that really solidified, you know, like this is a gift. And like I said, what I believe from God. So got out of the air force and, you know, went back to school, got my electrical engineering degree, then ended up continuing on getting masters. And here I am today. And now God has taken so much of those skills and, using them for kingdom in a way that I never would have imagined, you know, cause I, so it was, it was about the time going into the air force, you know, 2010, 2011, a couple of really big years, got saved, got married when the air force, you know, whole new chapter. I mean, probably even a whole new book, like not even the same right. book anymore at that point. Um, so a lot changed, um, in that time. So, you know, in those next couple of years, you know, getting my degree, you know, it's kind of like, Sometimes we look at, you know, ministry in such a narrow focus. It was like, how, how does an engineer fit into the kingdom? Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, God already has everything made. Like, what does he need engineers for? But, you know, over the years, you know, it's really opened my eyes. And, you know, so being a part of this podcast, um, I also help out in the main church so coordinating. Wait, wait. You don't help out in the main church. You are the <laughs> yeah. technical director for the broadcast team. Kind of like this podcast. Yep. It's like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. heavy it's lifting. Like, yeah, yeah, a lot of heavy lifting. It's yeah. not just something minimal that you're like, oh, I just show up on Sundays kind of maybe. Sound, cameras, yeah. lights, <clears throat> uh, live stream, all of that falls. Again, people falls don't understand this. I can't explain this enough. Like if you are looking at content coming from this house, <laughs> his hands are on it. You yeah. know, like it's so cr- like, I just don't think people, like you guys are obviously a ministry power couple coin that phrase, TM, <laughs> trademark, TM, because you guys do so much on so many different levels. I mean, on like, again, like people just, I don't, it baffles me because I feel like we kind of, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, I feel like we like contribute to this house. And then I look at other people like, I don't do a thing. <laughs> I'm nowhere near it. You know, like there's doing so much more. And right. like, like knowing that the, the audio, the visuals, the everything that we kind of see coming out digitally has got your fingerprint on it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> knowing, knowing and talk about that, that's crazy. I mean, amazing. Like, it's such a blessing that you get to take that skill set yeah. and apply it. 
But it's, it's so interesting. So like as an engineer, like part of what I do is you take various small subsystems and you put them together to make your final product. And I feel like that's what I'm doing for the church. I'm taking, you know, we take the sound and we take the cameras and we take all these pieces and put them together for a final product. And it's so cool to look at, look at that. And like, I would have never, I would have never came up with that in my mind of mm -hmm. like equating those two things together, you know, but it does. And like I said, it's, it's so cool to look back now and think about things that, you know, impactful moments that really shifted the way that I look at things. And now God using those moments. Um, so I'll think of like one example that I, I think back to from time to time. And, you know, I think me as a leader, you know, one thing that really shaped me, like being in the air force. Um, so working on the F-15 there, you know, it's, I was on a deployment and we got to see, um, some footage from one of the missions. And the situation was there was a ground forces that kind of walked into an ambush. Um, one of the guys was injured. They needed to medevac him. They're in this mountainous area. And the only place that the helicopter could land was where they got ambushed. And they couldn't get rid of the other wow. people to land the helicopter to get this guy out. And so they call the, you know, they call our jets that were in the area to be able to come through and clear out that ambush. Um, and then they were able to land the helicopter, get the guy out. And, you know, it was, you know, thankfully a happy ending to that story because they were able to get him out. This was, you know, by the time we got the report, it was a couple weeks later. Um, and they were like, yeah, he made it. He got out, you know, he's in the hospital wow. recovering. And so, you know, in that moment, I looked at that and it was just like, if it wasn't for, you know, me fixing the jet and, you know, the other crew chiefs, you know, making sure that the oil is good and the fuel right. guy making mm -hmm. sure there's gas and, you know, and the logistics guy making sure that there's parts and tool, like all these pieces have to come together for that moment. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what that moment is until after the fact. Mm -hmm. And so I now look at like the kingdom of God yeah. in that same light. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'm just a greeter. I just run sound. And like, you know, you don't realize like the impact. And like that was just one, one of the many, you know, we were there for six months and they had, we had jets in the air every single day. Mm -hmm. That was, so that was one of, you know, 180 missions or more that they were flying, you know, so, so we don't realize the impact. And so I try to use, you know, that mentality of like, Hey, we all play a piece. Mm -hmm. So that's where, yeah, sometimes it's hard for me to be like, yeah, this, this would fail without me. You know, like, I don't like that mentality. You know, it's not like this is my thing. You know, it's like, no, we all have, a significant piece, whether right. you're in the forefront and the spotlight's on you or whether you're in the background and Absolutely. nobody even knows. It's good. It, there's no difference in importance in that. Well, so we're all the body. We're all part exactly. of it. Right. You exactly. Know, and like, you might be a wrist. You know, I might yep. be a pinky. Mm -hmm. You know, like, who knows what part <laughs> we play, but yeah. we're all integral to the part of uh, to the body as a whole. Yeah. Um, but I think, and again, not to, not to, you know, braggadocious on you guys, but I think there is, though, a difference be being having a skill set for something and having a passion for it. Yeah. Yes. Like there's definitely, a huge definitely. separation between oh, I'm good at that versus I really want that to be blessed. Yeah. I, th and that's, the, I think the difference with you though, is I think there is a desire to take your skill set, which you clearly have, but make it kingdom minded. Yeah. And that not everyone does that. Not yeah. everyone has that. And that's really something special, especially in this house. I mean, my gosh, yeah. it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, from the ground up, people see, you know, the platform, they see the lights, they yep. see the live stream go on. And there's so many more pieces. I think it's a beautiful illustration of what the body of Christ is. Yeah. It's like if the if the oil guy hadn't changed the oil or yeah. if the, you know, the one little computer trip didn't work in that yeah. air, it's not flying, it's not getting off the ground. Yeah. And then we don't complete the mission that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you uh, think about not only where your skills and the anointing on your life has taken you, what have been some of the biggest learning things that have come out of it? Things, revelations maybe is a better word than learning because you're plenty smart. <laughs> um, and we know you've researched it, but just thinking about your relationship <laughs> with God. Uh, I mean, it's true. No, no it's I've been sure. a, ben measure, yeah. a beneficiary of his time and research and effort and be like, hey, Tanya, we have like, what do you think about these four things? And I researched this, this, and this is about, about podcasting. And I'm like, that is... 
the slide presentations. I, I love it. I love really, it. I eat nice. it up. Those are nice. I like <laughs> them. I, I, as a, as a fellow nerd, I <laughs> eat that up. I'm um, an analytics person, so I really appreciate yeah. analytics. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I totally get it. Um, but just thinking about all of that in light of the way the Lord speaks to you and what you've learned along the way, as far as your walk with the Lord, and feel free to answer it too. Hmm. I mean, there's so much there. Uh, yeah, I think for me, especially right now where I'm at and, you know, what I'm working on, it's just, I feel like the church as a whole has been so like underplayed, you know, it's so undervalued. Um, and, and there's so much more to do there. And so I guess to re like rewind a little bit, you know, I grew up in a completely like unchurched home. Um, you know, never went to church. Like I got, I mean, it, it's sad. I, I could probably, you know, count the times I went to church on one hand, like up to like, you know, adulthood. Mm. It's like, I, rem I remember going to a lock-in in like sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I remember <laughs> <laughs> never again <laughs> going to like young life in high school, you know, okay. and it was like, you know, very like, like I, it was so few that I can remember like those specific, those specific times instances. so you know my you know so looking back at it now and with this position and what we're doing here with the podcast i'm like there you know how many people uh, how many of me are there out there right now that just they don't know like mm -hmm. like your only knowledge of god and jesus and the bible is like these like pop culture like references where it's like you know, what do the movies say that Jesus is, which we know is going to be a very distorted right. view <laughs> of who Jesus really is. Sure. Um, <clears throat> like, you know, so, you know, so like I said, it was, you know, 2010, 2011 is when I got saved. And, um, you know, I, I'm such like a processor, like, you know, that was a long drawn out process. It wasn't like, oh yeah, this moment I got saved. It was like, you know, probably a year or more of chipping away of like, you know, just trying to understand like who God is, what G who Jesus is, what this whole thing is about. Because like I said, it was such a distorted, distorted view. And I, I think sometimes we as a church we take for granted, like, oh yeah, we live in America. People know who Jesus is. They know who God is. It, you know, but it, it's not always that case. Right. Um. So having that, you know, and then coming into church and being so like, like Bible illiterate. Like I remember. So in like 2011, I had been, I was in the Air Force and I was stationed, I was going through training up in Wichita Falls, which is like a couple hours north of here. So I'd come down on the weekends and, you know, would go to church here. This was like 2012. So like baby Christian. Um, and I remember coming to church here and Pastor Justin like praying in tongues and me just thinking like, oh, what language is that? That's pretty cool. I didn't know he, like, <laughs> oh I didn't know he was so fluent and, you know, and, and that's like all I, like, I had no idea. <laughs> he it was a like, lot. he's yeah. so cultured. Um, you know, my, <laughs> Like, I think one of the thoughts was probably like, oh, well, you know, in Boondock Saints, then they would pray in Latin. So maybe that's one of the, th you know, like. Oh, my God. Exactly. Like, <laughs> we're doing a Boondock Saints reference. Like, like, this is the best podcast ever. Why, like, pop culture Jesus is not the real Jesus, you know? Oh, like, right. So, it, you know, you don't realize, oh I think gosh. at the church, we take for granted that, you know, we're around spiritual people who know spiritual principles. Right that you don't realize like there's a whole world out there that this is foreign. They don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't know the goodness that's out there for them. Mm -hmm. They don't know the, the peace and the joy and you know, the healing that's just waiting for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I feel like part of my job is how do we get that to those people that, that aren't going to come into the church mm -hmm. that are going to, you know, I mean, even the people that are in the church, so many of them yes. that are Christians don't understand exactly what's, right. what they're not, Right. Yeah, I mean, I was one of those people, so I yeah. get it. Yeah, like, I get it. You just living in lack and not even aware of well, it. Well, and when you get saved as an adult, you don't have a frame of reference for that. Mm -hmm. stuff. Exactly. I mean, I remember going to church when I was finally saved and being like, "I don't, what is going on?" Yeah, yeah, and and being able <laughs> well, to have so happy <laughs> having people around you that that loved you through that time yeah. because oh, it wasn't. Yeah. It's not like you you don't like fit in, quote unquote. You you kind of stand out as someone like 
What are, oh, yeah. now that now is the time to stand, and now is now is the time to sit, and <laughs> what is this little cu- okay? You know, it's all it of was different things. though, because <laughs> yeah. you know we. I'm we a little started, more thirsty than this, right, <laughs> guys? Uh, uh, but we started dating in 2010, yes. so like that shows reference. You know, right. I was yeah. from this house, so when he would ask me questions, I'm like. It's just what we do. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's just what we do. It's almost just like a language barrier. Yeah, you know, she like, would say yeah. things. And, and he it's wouldn't just understand. Like, I'm like, well, I don't know how else yes. to explain it. So I'm like, you're going to have to research it. You're going to have to do your own understanding of it. And yeah. that's really what helped him, like, dive in and understand. And then obviously just being connected and learning and keep growing and that hunger that, you know, he, that's inside of him. That was a huge part of it. Yeah. When I think that's. That's, I think, the big divide. Some people start that journey and then just kind of get tired of it. Yeah. Or, Mm -hmm. like, they get complacent or they get comfortable. Yeah. You know, and, like, where they don't keep that hunger, fresh desire to keep moving, moving, Mm -hmm. moving, moving. And that's where I think the one of the blessings that God gave you is that desire for excellence. Yeah. You know, hey, I can't settle for just a decent relationship with the Lord. I can't settle for a decent relationship with whatever it is I'm doing. I need... I need to experience All it. In. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is great. Like, I mean, it really is. It can, it can be a bad thing. Yeah. If it's not kingdom minded, you know yeah. I mean? like, but it can be really a blessed and anointed thing, which is why I think where you're operating in now. And we receive the most mm-hmm. of that selfishly because we are a part of the things that you are putting your, your, Both your gifts you. to it. Yeah. 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 It's crazy to be on like, you know, like the, <clears throat> the amount of appreciation and respect and, and, and love that we have for what you guys do here. I just really, I want people to understand, like it really is significant. It's yeah. not nothing. And it's like, we get the joy of showing up. Mm. I get the joy of showing up, <laughs> <laughs> but like, like, like so many people that are part of this, you, you just, you're humbled by the amount of people that have a love for this, that don't get any, they're not on the forefront of any of it. Yeah. It's just behind the scene people who love what we're doing in this house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, so baffling. And it's it's wonderful to have people like you, couples like you that yeah. have a heart for that. Um, one of my very favorite illustrations is always the fivefold in illustration with the hand, like um, the fivefold ministry gifts, you know, pastor, evangelist, pastor, teacher, apostle, all of those gifts are like 5% of the body of Christ. Yeah. And then there's couples like you all throughout yeah. the big church, all throughout the kingdom yeah. that are the 95% that are leading the 95%. We didn't even mention that they were Thrive Group leaders. <laughs> You know, there's not one thing we'd be here all day, right? If, like, there's like a litany of like all the things they do. It's right. Incri- that's what I'm trying to say. Like, like when I say a ministry power couple, right? They're the definition right. of that, like on every single level. Well, it, it is the helps ministry. It's an administration. It's the the broadcast team that worship that, team, broadcast team, uh, right? Especially, I mean, I could go. What is there something? It'd be easier to say, what don't you guys do here? Yeah, you know, I mean, that would be the shorter <laughs> conversation. It would be. Children's, I think, is the only one now. We yeah. used to do youth. You used to do youth. We used to do youth. So used to do youth. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're young adults. Adults. So all the youth that were youth what with you are now young adults yeah. with yeah. you, right? Well, I say all that to say, like, like the heartbeat of what we do at, at Heritage is in you guys. Yes. You guys do it. You see it. Without you, the anointing, and I don't. I, I mean, I know we're we're putting a lot, of, but without the gifts that you bring and the heart, the anointing can't go forth. When when Pastor preaches, he's he's not able to. I mean, there's just such a support that comes around him, and you guys are huge, huge parts of that. Um, and when I think about what our church is all about, which is making winners in life, and you know this question because you've already answered it <laughs> Yeah, a few I've times. done it twice. <laughs> um, but making winners in life is I'm what done. we do here. <laughs> I'm done. Like, Brad can totally. It's all on you, honey. All Three on times you. a lady. You no, know what I mean? Like. Please, please, no. <laughs> so, Brad, tell us, what does making a winner, making winner in life mean to you? Um, so, obviously... I've heard this question a lot. You've heard so it at least I, I, 50 anyone, times. You've heard yeah. this question. I've had plenty <laughs> of time to repair, right? So raise the bar. Um, so for me personally, one of the first scriptures that I really grabbed onto um, was Romans 12 two. Like I said, I was completely Christian illiterate, you know. Um, so I was like, okay, I got I got some major work to do here. And, <laughs> you know, in the, in the renewing area of my life. Um but it's never stopped, you know, like I remember like that stuck out to me and I was like, okay, I'm going to have, let me read a few books and I'm going to get renewed and we're going to be good. Right. And then it's like (laughs) another level and then another level and then another level. So now, you know, how I try to just live my life, it's, am I better today than I was yesterday? And what am I doing to be better tomorrow than what I am today? You know? And I feel like if that is our mentality, Mm -hmm. We're always trying to get closer to God. We're always trying to do what God's calling us to do. We're always trying to 
if that's our purpose and if we're being intentional with that, mm. um, good then <laughs> sorry, it's really then good. you're going to, you're going to be like Paul and get to the end and say, I, I ran my race. I know I did what I, what, I, what God was calling me to do because every day you're making that, that purpose. So just, you know, so I always just fall back to Romans 12 too. And it's, it's the renewing of your mind. You know, it's, it's a nonstop it's process. It's not, you know, I, I wish maybe it would have said once you renewed your mind, then you'll know, you know, but you no, know, it's, it's the renewing. So it's nonstop. It's something that we're always going to be doing. So, so that to me is how you become a winner in life. It's just, are you always getting a little bit better, a little bit closer to God, a little bit more, more into your calling, you know, are we just always, or are we just going to settle back and say, Oh, you know, I checked the box. I went to church this week. That's good enough. You know, <clears throat> that's, that's a great answer. I, I love it too. Cause it, it is a scary place to be in when you're comfortable, mm -hmm. like comfortable, meaning not sure. no desire to move forward. And we've yeah. kind of talked about mm -hmm. this in other, it's a consistent theme where people just get really comfortable with where they're at spiritually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm as guilty as anybody have been in those seasons where I'm like, I'm kind of, you know, and there is no, there is no idol in your faith. You're either going yeah. towards mm -hmm. them or you're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's tough to say it that way, but it's totally true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, uh, the, uh, one of our first memories for me and my, my wife, we had dinner at your guys' house. Yeah. yeah. And for people who don't know, Brad <laughs> makes a majorly delicious ribeye. Uh, <laughs> converted my wife, actually. Let's <laughs> talk about that. My wife's like, I don't want any steak. And then she had two. So not to call her out, <laughs> yeah. but it was a good ribeye. She ate mine and hers. Um, but like you guys do walk that out on a, on a consistent basis. Like how you guys are on Sunday is how you are on Monday and how you're on Tuesday. And that desire and that, per, like that, that the sincerity of your faith it's not a joke. It's not yeah. a game. It's not, it really is how you guys live your life. And it's so inspiring for people that, that are like new to this house or anywhere else. Like it's, it's super impressive. You guys are, have always been people that were like, wow, they're and, doing life right. And it's a great example to all the teams that you call mm -hmm. all the yeah. people that, that are looking to you guys for direction and to, to know that their leaders are truly hearing from God yeah. on everything that they do. So, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not always something that just comes naturally to, you know, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I think I was at a really comfortable spot. You know, I was on the worship team. I was serving. I was doing the things. And it was fun and it was comfortable. It wasn't too much. wasn't too little. Just right, you know. And <laughs> then. boxed it. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, this podcast mm -hmm. kind of took off. So that was like another thing. I was like, okay, but that's not too bad. And then I remember like we were talking and being on the worship team looking back, it was like, man, we need some help in this, you know. We need someone, you know, we got the sound, we got the broadcast, but it's so like disorganized, like, you know, there's not, someone should really, you know, do that. Someone. Like, so someone, someone. So someone that needs phrase. to do that. Someone. Someone and then it was like, yeah. and then it was like four months later, it was like, hey, do you want to, you want to step into that, that position? I was it. like, I was like, I will just because I know it, it was a needed, but there's been lots of times I was like, what did I get myself into? You know, <laughs> like, uh, can I read, read, but you know, it's been good. Like I said, it was needed. Um. But I, it's I wouldn't our change that. too. Yeah. Our why of being here is like we know that God's called us here mm -hmm. to help this house specifically. Mm -hmm. So if we consistently keep that on the forefront of our minds yep. of like, why are we here? Why are we at Heritage? Because we're called here. God yeah. has placed us here. So what are we going to do with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I think that's why, like, okay, you have a need here, you need help here. You know, how can we help? You know, mm -hmm. that's such a huge thing for me because it's like, well, no, God's called us here. Yeah. So I, and I think that's what has helped us, yeah. you know, yeah. with it. Yeah. Keep the perspective, so understand. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Taking those steps into mm -hmm. God's calling. They're not always the easiest and most comfortable steps, but yeah. it's the necessary and most fulfilling. That's great. That's this great. was fun. It was really good. <laughs> you guys are, I seriously, I, I've been looking forward to this is one of the conversations Me I'm really too. looking forward to just because I know how important Brad and you guys both are to this sure. entire process. So I was really excited to let all of you join in on the inside information that we know about about brad and about marty yeah. about so i was just uh, did you guys have fun that was yes, fun did you enjoy it yeah yes. we are so you happy you're here best. so thank you all for coming uh for coming for listening <laughs> for watching uh we love you guys we appreciate it join us next friday for another winning conversation and another turn the table I believe, yes. right oh yep. i'm just excited all right we'll talk to you soon <laughs>